Hello everyone! Hey. So this week we are talking about So You Want a Job. So there are lots of jobs that you can have as a musician. You could be an educator, you could be a freelancer, you could work in an orchestra, and we're gonna try to cover that between the two of us, you know, as I'm a pianist and Martin's a trombonist, and we both work and have worked in many academic situations so we know the gamut of how to get a job so do you want to talk about maybe building up your cv and things that you did sure so i'm going to discuss building up your cv or your resume while you're in school because i feel that a lot of people feel that you start actually building your CV or your resume once you graduate, and that's a big no-no. Too late. <laughs> um, you're, you're starting like while you're in school. And so, um, one, like say if you want to uh, perform on various concert series or you know present at, at conferences, um, you should start trying to perform re professional recitals outside of the university. Um, I always thought it was very interesting for um, performance degrees that you're only really required to give two recitals out mm. of your four years of school. But if that's what you want to do for a living, two hours out of four years is just not enough. Um, one thing that I did when I was a doctoral student, I started actually giving, um, presenting recitals at different <coughs> universities. And I knew that this is something I wanted to do. And I found the more that I was doing them that I started getting recognized and I started getting invited to uh, go to more schools and to go to different festivals and also the more I was doing it, it became more natural mm -hmm. because you're performing a lot and you're performing um, different repertoire. Um, we discussed this on a previous video, but also if you want to find your own niche, um, you know, when I was in school I was playing all the standard repertoire and that is great, but if you wanted to make a name for yourself, actually performing new music that no one's heard before. Yeah, new music is really important and there's gonna be another video, you can catch that link to about different things that I do as far as new music and where you can find it and where you can buy it. So we'll catch you up on that and you can just click that link too. Yeah, and <clears throat> also um, going to different conferences mm. is huge. And um, if you missed our video last time, you can go back and check out our attending conferences video. But that is a great way to network. It's a great way to perform for your peers. It's also um, just a great way just to get yourself out there and build your resume. And you can also use it as professional development and you can add it to your professional development um, tag on your resume or your CV as well. Yeah, so really, really important for all of those of you in school, whether you're an undergraduate or a graduate or doctorate, artist diploma, professional um, diploma, get your resume started now. Don't be satisfied with the degree requirements at your university or conservatory that tell you you have to play one recital. What artist do you know that can make a living off playing one recital a year? No one, okay? We have to play many, many recitals. Even if you're teaching, you know, you still want to perform, you still got to do quite a few recitals a year to make a significant um, boost in your income. So I want to talk a little bit about things that you can do out of school. Uh, you know, let's say you're watching this and you're like, oh, I didn't build up my CV while I was in school. It's okay. Um, there's lots of things that you can do and you can check out some of those other videos like Martin was saying, the conferences videos. Um, another thing that's really important, especially as a pianist or maybe a solo instrument, is competitions. So those are wonderful ways to build your CV and your repertoire. So don't just think of it as like, oh, well, you know, what if I don't win? It's way more than winning. It's about building up your chops, your technique, keeping it fresh, and also building your repertoire, diversifying your repertoire, so that when you do wanna go maybe apply for an academic job and you have to play a recital or you wanna be a freelancer and you wanna put on some concerts, you have that repertoire. You're not like always trying to learn new things that, at the time of the show, it's because that can be really stressful too. So that's another thing you can do when you're out of school. And, and you, yeah, can also, you can also do competitions while you're in school too. Yes, exactly. And if you don't know about them or maybe you haven't discussed that with your teacher, be proactive. Go ask your teacher for um, what competitions you can do or just go walk around your building. A lot of times schools put those flyers up on the wall. So they're there for you and you can research that. Um, other things you can do when you're out of school. Actually, I think this kind of it blends when you're in school and out of school, but really think about what do I want to do? 
do I want to teach? Do I want to play? Or And what is that percentage? Because a lot of musicians do both, right? A lot of musicians teach and they play or they compose and they teach. Um, think about what do you want that percentage to be? Do you want to be playing 60% of the time, teaching 40% of the time? Do you want 50-50? Do you want 80-20? That might be different for different people. Um, but you need to know what that is so you know how to build your resume. Because a lot of people spend time you know, working odd jobs and they don't really do anything to build their resume in the direction they want to go. So be thinking about that. So if you want to be a teacher, maybe you can go get a job at a local high school or elementary school or if you're a pianist maybe you can tutor after school a lot of schools have keyboard programs and the kids can't afford lessons there's lots of ways that you can kind of get into doing what you want to do before you actually get the job so you can build up that cv to do it yeah i know when i was in graduate <laughs> school um i so like the, half the reason i was able to pay my rent when i was teaching private lessons mm -hmm. i mean i had a low brass studio of 30 students yeah. and you know when I was in college I did work odd jobs at the mall and different restaurants and you know when I was in graduate school I told myself I don't want to work these odd jobs I want to do um, work that's actually in my field and having that private studio was fantastic one you were yes I was making money but then also I was able to build my resume and I knew that also I had a passion for teaching, so that was a great way to build that resume as well. Yeah, I also had 40 students when I was a graduate student, so it's actually a way better income than working at coffee shops. Um, so those are kind of some of the big things. We've talked about conferences and doing competitions, and then I think another thing that could be really important if you want to build up your CV is to make good relationships with other people, um, especially chamber music is a, usually a big component of really any musician's um, performance vita and performance lifestyle. So collaborate with people you like, find people who are wanting to do the same things you want to do, um, collaborate with people who are going to speak well about you when you leave the room, when you're not in the room. You want people who are really on your team, um, not people who are kind of trying to use you to get to the next thing or, you know, or vice versa. Don't be that person. But really think about the collaborations that you can do in the chamber music side of your field too, so that you have lots of different options for building your career. Yeah, I mean, there's that saying, iron sharpens iron. Mm -hmm. So you definitely wanna be able to work with people that um, have the same thought process um, as you and have the same goals as well. And there are, I mean, I feel like if you really wanna do something in the music field, especially as a performer, mm -hmm. chamber music is where it's at. I um, mean, it's just, it's just great. Um, it's an opportunity where you can really stretch the boundaries to and it doesn't have to be like your typical chamber ensemble. It doesn't yeah. have to be a brass quintet or a piano trio. I mean, do something different. I love um, collaborating with my saxophone colleague. I mean, you never really see a trombone and a saxophone duo that much. So um, it can be like these different combinations too. Yes. So challenge of the week. Do you have any thoughts for them this week, Martin? Challenge of the week. Um, I would say one, um, if you're a student, be more proactive, mm. um, try to find competitions uh, to compete for, especially um, around this time, that's when competitions are getting announced. Um, if you are a master's, a doctoral student, and you wanna be a concert artist, start working on booking um, mm -hmm. your gigs. And if you need help on booking gigs, you can check out a previous video. Yeah, I say, Write down three additional concerts that you can do outside of your degree plan and go do them. Go do them this year. Whether that's a school, a library, a church, go do three additional concerts this year. And if you're out of school, go do 10, okay? Go do 10 additional concerts. Write down where those are. You might not be getting paid for all of them, but you gotta build out your performance shop so you can have the kind of career you want. All right, so we'll see you guys next time. See ya.